Hi all, and welcome to the Medical AI Lab Reading Group session. Every Thursday, a lab member covers a recent paper in either Core AI or Medical AI. These sessions are targeted to be broadly interesting to those interested in, interested in the cutting edge of AI and its applications to medicine. This week, we will have Vivek Shankar present the paper Glide towards photo, photorealistic image generation and editing with text-guided diffusion models. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome Vivek to share this paper with us. Hi, everyone. Uh, yep, as Pranav mentioned, I'll be talking about the paper called uh, Glide um, that came out of OpenAI pretty recently. Um, yeah, so this was a paper from OpenAI that came, uh, uh, was written by Nicole uh, Dariwal and Ramesh et al. Um, so it discusses uh, dis diffusion models with which Catherine presented in the last uh, last talk, um, but they apply it to the problem of uh, text conditional image generation. So in this paper, uh, at a high level, they use two different guidance strategies, and we'll go over what uh, that, that exactly means um, for training the diffusion model uh, called clip guidance and classifier free guidance. And they found that classifier free guidance ends up performing better for this problem of uh, image synthesis. Um, and they also fine tune the model to perform image in painting. So motivating this work, uh, the authors note that um, the images uh, can be pretty easily described with text, but often require hours of labor to create. So uh, what if we had a tool that could automatically generate images from natural language descriptions? And what if we could iteratively edit the image also with natural language to make edits uh, to the image? Um, so recently text conditional image models have been shown that they're pretty good at creating images from freeform text prompts. Uh, but and and they're able to capture like object relationships, um, but they aren't yet able to create uh, very photorealistic images that capture all aspects of the text. Um, on the other hand, unconditional image models. So these these are models uh, that generate images without any specific text prompt. Uh, these can generate uh, photorealistic images that like sometimes even humans can't distinguish from real ones. And so in this line of work, diffusion models have been uh, a pretty promising architecture. So uh, actually in a previous work by the same authors of this paper, they got these um, uh, uh, diffusion models to generate uh, photorealistic images in a class conditional setting uh, via uh, classifier guidance. Um, so class conditional means that the model takes as input the class label for the image. So uh, using classifier guidance, uh, the idea is that the diffusion model can condition on the classifiers on a separate classifiers labels. So in addition to the diffusion model, they have the separate classifier that's whose job is to predict the class of the image. And then during the diffusion process, which we'll go into a little bit later, we use gradients from the separate classifier to guide the image sample uh, towards the label. And so this paper combines uh, these techniques uh, um, namely diffusion models and uh, uh, guidance, classifier guidance to the problem of text conditional image generation. Um, and so here are some pretty amazing results of the model in action, uh, just to give you a, a sneak peek. Um, so we see that the model generates very realistic uh, images for pretty complex prompts, uh, captures uh, relationships between objects such as th this hedgehog actually using the calculator or this cat playing uh, checkers. Uh, and it's even able to get like shadows and reflections right, as you see in this uh, uh, fall uh, in, in this picture of the Grand Canyon. Um, and so here are a couple of some more awesome results. So the model can uh, generate images, for example, in a particular style, like Van Gogh's Starry Night, uh, or uh, in the style of a, a crayon drawing. <laughs> um, but nevertheless, uh, the model still does have difficulty producing realistic images for um, more complex prompts. So therefore, the authors train the model to perform this task called image in painting. So the idea is here you give the model like a mask um, and a text description of what to edit in that mask. For example, zebras roaming in the field. Um, and the model makes the corresponding change to the masked portion of the image. And so the idea here is that by using this image in painting task um, that the model is able to, to do pretty well, um, you can actually uh, iteratively edit images to match more and more complex prompts. And so here's an example of the model performing this image in painting task. So in all of these images, the green region is masked out and the model fills it in by conditioning on the text. 
So for, exa uh, for example, you, you give it the text, a man with red hair, um, and the model is able to pretty amazingly change the hair color of this guy from, uh, I don't know what it originally was since it's masked out, but it's, it's not red. <laughs> Um, so, and I think it's noteworthy to uh, see that the model is able to do this in a way that the image edits are hardly even noticeable. Like, I think it's it's pretty hard for me to tell that this was actually generated by a model. Um, that it 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 does quite accurately match the surrounding image context. Uh, so, yeah, uh, pretty amazing stuff. So. Um, with that, let's dive into the model architecture, uh, starting with um, uh, diffusion models. Uh, so the setup is as follows, um, pretty similar to what Catherine explain, explained in, in Tuesday's talk, but I think I'll go over it briefly just to uh, give an idea. Um, so we start with a sample X0 from the data distribution, uh, which is unknown, the data distribution that generates uh, these pretty images. Uh, so we start with the sample X0 from uh, Q. Um, and so starting with X0, we produce a series of latent variables. Uh, X1 through XT by progressively adding no Gaussian noise to the sample. So specifically, we use this distribution uh, the, um, with mean um, basically XT minus one, the pre so the previous image times square root of alpha T. So this is some scale factor. Uh, alpha T is usually less than one, so we're uh, scaling the image down here. And the covariance is one minus alpha T times the identity matrix. So this is a diagonal covariance. And so um, we produce this chain of variables basically by sampling, according to this distribution, sampling the next image, the image at time step t, uh, conditioned on the previous image, the image at time step t minus one. So uh, the authors then make the following claims. So first, uh, if the magnitude of the noise uh, added in each step, in each one of these uh, sampling steps is small enough, uh, the posterior distribution, so that is q of xt minus one given xt, uh, can be approximated by a diagonal Gaussian. So uh, the posterior distribution basically exp uh, is the distribution that generates the reverse process. So generating the previous image, xt minus one from xt. And so the second claim the authors make is that if the magnitude of total noise is large enough across all these uh, steps from one to t, um, uh, the final uh, image, xt, can be approximated by uh, um, a standard Gaussian distribution. So I think this uh, generally makes sense. So the idea is that as we keep repeating the sampling process, we're adding more and more Gaussian noise uh, to the image. So at the end, finally, this XT is just pure Gaussian noise. And so the job of a diffusion model is to learn to approximate the posterior distribution. So generating the previous image from, uh, from the current image. So XT minus one conditioned on XT. Um, and uh, based on these claims, uh, we can say that this posterior distribution is basically some normal distribution whose parameters are learned by the, um, uh, by the uh, diffusion model. And so given all of this, uh, here's how we do inference or use these diffusion models to generate images. So we go in reverse. So we start by sampling uh, something from uh, this uh, true noise uh, distribution. Uh, n of zero i, um, and we reduce noise in a sequence of steps using the learned diffusion model. So we, uh, we use the posterior distribution to sample xt minus one conditioned on xt, xt minus two conditioned on xt minus one, all the way until we get to x zero, which should ideally lie in the data distribution. So in interest of time, I'm going to skip the details of how we actually go about optimizing these diffusion models. But essentially, um, we get a uh, a mean squared error loss between epsilon, which is the true noise uh, added to the image um, versus the predicted noise. Uh, so epsilon theta is the predicted noise uh, by the model. And, and so the model gets as input both the image at time step t and the time step itself. And, and it learns how to reconstruct the previous image uh, in that diffusion sampling process. So um, I think the new bits uh, beyond diffusion models are, are this idea of uh, guidance. Um, so the authors found previously that if you have something called a class conditional diffusion model, so that is the model uh, gets as input the class of the image it's supposed to generate, you can actually improve the image quality using uh, classifier guidance. So uh, uh, just as before you have this diffusion model um, 
uh, with uh, some mean and some variance. In this case, we're conditioning on y because we get as input the, the class of the model, uh, the class of the image, sorry. So um, using this guided diffusion process, the idea is that you have this other classifier model, phi, uh, phi um, and its job is to predict the class of the image. So um, using classifier guidance, uh, what you can do is use this, this external classifier to guide the image that's generated during the diffusion process towards this, this correct label. So specifically, uh, we have this update rule. So um, basically, we, are, we, we have the, the, the mean that, uh, that, that the diffusion model generates, the mean of uh, xt conditioned on y. And we add in uh, the guidance scale s times uh, the covariance times uh, this gradient expression. So breaking this down, uh, this gradient uh, is the gradient of the log probability of the class Y um, uh, predicted by, as predicted by the classifier uh, with respect to the image XT. So this gradient tells us the direction we should adjust this image XT in order to maximize the probability of the true class. Um, so effectively, this update rule is guiding uh, the diffusion process towards generating images that will be correctly classified by this classifier. And in other words, this will hopefully lead to, to better quality images in general. Uh, so building on this idea of uh, classifier guidance, um, uh, the next idea to go over is classifier free guidance. So as you might have noticed in the previous classifier guidance approach, we actually need this separate classifier uh, to predict the class of the image. So we need some external classifier that's able to do this. Um, this is actually an issue in our case because we can't use a standard classifier out of the box because remember in the diffusion process we have these noisy images, so we need a classifier that actually works uh, well with these noisy images. So hence the authors came up with this idea of classifier free guidance that does not require such an external classifier at all. So. Uh, what they do is they replace uh, the label Y in the diffusion model with a null label um, with some probability during training. Uh, during training of the diffusion model. And so the result is the model is able to both learn how to generate images conditionally, conditioned on this labeled Y, as well as unconditionally um, without any label at all. And so this inspires the following update rule. Um, so this is basically the same as before. Um, in this case, the update rule is using uh, epsilons, the predicted noise, but uh, it's similar to, to the means that we showed earlier. But the key difference is uh, instead of using the gradient as before, we have the difference between uh, the, the noise as predicted by the class conditional model and the noise predicted by the model that uh, learns to generate images unconditionally without the class Y. Um, I'm gonna skip the intuition, uh, but um, basically the, the authors do, do spend some time and explain how they, uh, this update rule is uh, pretty similar to, to the rule we showed earlier. Uh, in general, this, this update rule is uh, getting the model to generate, um, to, to push the, the images it generates in the direction of uh, uh, the class conditional predictions, because the class conditional predictions are going to be better because they're conditioned on this extra class information. So it's, again, just a, a form of guidance to, to get the model to generate better images. Um, so this is just a note uh, to mention, we've, we've been talking about uh, classifier guidance um, in, and classifier free guidance um, in this class conditional setting, but in our case, this class is actually a text prompt. So um, all that they do is it's, it's basically the same update rule. I've replaced um, um, uh, the label in the previous slide Y with uh, C, which is the caption. So we're, um, this, this just involves encoding the caption uh, and and feeding feeding that into into the model. Um, so the last key idea used in this paper is clip guidance. Uh, so clip uh, is a model that's used to learn a joint representation between images and text, and it involves uh, basically embedding images and text in the same space. So the idea is that uh, you train on these image uh, caption pairs. Uh, the training process involves optimizing this uh, cross entropy loss, which uh, encourages a high dot product between f of x and g of c if uh, image x is supposed to be paired with this caption c and uh, encourages a low dot product otherwise. So uh, how do we apply this idea of clip guidance to our diffusion models? 
So uh, again, we have um, another similar update rule as we've seen before. Um, the key difference here now is we're uh, using um, uh, guidance scale times the covariance times the gradient of this clip score, uh, the dot product with respect to XT. And again, this, this gradient tells us how to update the image XT in order to maximize the clip score. Uh, this approach, again, just as I uh, as we as I mentioned before, uh, it involves needing to train this clip model. We need this for, first of all, this external clip model, and we need to train it on noisy images um, um, because noisy images are are created during this diffusion sampling process. Um, and so the authors call such a clip model that's trained on noisy images as a noised clip model. And they also note in some of their supplementary experiments that if you were to use a public clip model, um, it can still be used to guide diffusion models. But uh, the result is not as good because uh, you have to, uh, to, to get it to work on these noisy intermediate images that occur, occur during the diffusion sampling process that are uh, out of distribution for the model. Um, so uh, just getting into the training details a bit. So the authors train uh, a 3.5 billion uh, text conditional diffusion model. Um, it's basically the same diffusion model architecture that was used in, in previous papers by the same group. Um, and so uh, to, uh, this, the, the key thing that they added is conditioning on text, which involves uh, encoding the text by feeding the text into a transformer model, getting the sequence of K tokens and adding this token embedding in, instead of a class embedding inside the diffusion model. Um, to implement this idea of classifier-free guidance, uh, as I mentioned before, um, uh, all you do is replace the text token sequences with an empty sequence some uh, percentage of the time. And so the model, as a result, uh, learns to generate text conditional outputs and generate images unconditionally. Uh, to implement clip guidance, the authors train these noised clip models. Um, and uh, as mentioned before, using noisy images. Uh, and for this task of diffusion model in painting um, that you saw earlier, uh, the authors explicitly fine tune the model for this task by erasing random regions of the training examples uh, and feeding the resulting portions, the remaining portions of the image uh, with the mask channel as conditioning information. Um, and so here are some qualitative, more qualitative results of the model in action. So on the left, we see some examples of Glide performing image in painting. Uh, so it's able to successfully modify images using uh, text prompts. Um, and so it's able to like add new objects like this hat on top of this corgi um, uh, pretty successfully. Um, on the right, you see uh, uh, an example of uh, comparison, comparing glide uh, with clip classifier free guidance to glide with cl clip guidance to some of the previous uh, uh, state of the art uh, text conditional uh, image generation models. And you can see that qualitatively glide with classifier free guidance is doing really well and it's generating some pretty um, awesome photorealistic images. Um, and so here's another example of the image in painting task. So uh, the idea is that you give Glide, um, you start with, with, uh, uncondi with, with text conditional image generation zero shot. So you give like, for example, the prompt a cozy living room, the model generates the first image and then you subsequently mask out regions and give it additional text prompts and it's able to make the corresponding edits. So um, I'll just spend a couple of minutes on some of the quantitative results uh, that the authors go into. So they look at uh, precision and recall uh, and FID versus inception score uh, trade-offs as you vary the guidance scale that the parameter S that you saw in those update rules earlier. And so the authors note there's a clear trade-off between both quantities um, uh, as you increase guidance scale uh, there's basically a trade-off uh, between precision recall as well as inception score and FID. And because the blue line, which refers to classifier free guidance is further to the right, it's basically outperforming clip guidance at every guidance scale. However, the authors actually see the exact opposite trend on the graph of uh, clip score versus FID. Um, so uh, in this case, actually clip guidance is performing better. So the authors actually hypothesize that clip guidance is uh, basically, since we're using clip guidance and uh, evaluating it based on the clip score, it's probably the case that uh, the model is just finding examples that perform well in terms of getting a high clip score, but not truly outperforming uh, classifier-free guidance on the task of match matching the prompt. 
so they set up this human evaluation scheme to uh, to check this result. So in this scheme, basically, people are given two images and asked to pick uh, each image, one from classifier free guidance and one from uh, 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 the clip model, clip guidance, and asked to pick which image uh, actually better matches uh, the caption or looks more photorealistic. Um, and through the course of this comparison, so first they sweep over guidance scales and pick the best scale for each method. Um, and basically the result of this comparison is that the human evaluators disagreed with the CLIP score uh, graph that you saw earlier. They do also find that classifier free guidance is performing better. And the metric they use in this table is something called the ELO score, which uh, is used to compare head-to-head -head performance of the models. Um, again, probably don't have time to get into that, but um, yeah. Uh, the authors uh, also compare Glide with several previously implemented uh, uh, text conditional generative uh, image models, and they found that Glide is uh, performing pretty well. Um, and the thing to note here is that this is on a data set called MS Coco, which Glide wasn't even trained on. So this is pretty astounding that it's able to get uh, good uh, FID uh, scores, uh, nevertheless. And the very last uh, result that the authors mentioned was uh, uh, comparing Glide against DALI, which was a previous uh, model also developed by the same authors for text conditional image generation. Um, basically, they, they tried a, a, a couple of different schemes here uh, um, to try and get uh, DALI to perform as well as possible. So they use something called clip re-ranking in the second uh, row, uh, which allows DALI to use more test time compute and uh, use uh, generate a whole bunch of images and re-rank them according to, to clip score and pick the best ones. And even when you do that, um, uh, the the glide model is still performing better. Uh, so specifically, the 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 numbers that reported in this table are win percentages, uh, where a uh, win percentage is basically if you see a number eighty nine percent, it means that human evaluators thought glide uh, was better than Dali eighty nine percent of the time for photorealism. So you can see that the authors are really trying to make uh, the, the previous model DALI work as well as they can. But even in those settings that is uh, uh, pretty good for DALI, uh, Glide is still performing even better. And so nevertheless, there are some cases where uh, Glide is, isn't performing as well. Uh, so some complex prompts, like for example, this illustration of a cat that has eight legs, the model is not able to accurately produce a picture that matches that prompt. Uh, but nevertheless, I think uh, a lot of the results were really good and uh, yeah, I would uh, definitely um, recommend uh, taking a closer look at some of these these uh, areas if, uh, if you had uh, any other questions or wanted to dig deeper into some of these uh, great, great uh, work by the OpenAI team. And so, yeah, that's all I had. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Vivek, for the fascinating presentation.